Hello and welcome to M3D's Quad Fusion Butterfly Layout Tutorial. Today we're going to be working with Voxelizer. So if you go to voxelizer.com in the download section, you're going to want to download Voxelizer Experimental. This version is specifically for the quad and that's what we'll be using today. Once you've downloaded and installed that, we're going to move to thingiverse.com. I'd like to give credit to Thingiverse user Eric HF for creating Thing552835. This butterfly template gives us a great starting point as well as an outline layer. But within Voxelizer, we're going to add one more layer. That's going to be a middle layer for an image projection technique that Voxelizer allows us to do. Also at Thingiverse.com is Thing3679833. And that's going to be the files that we're using today within Voxelizer. It's going to have our bottom, middle, and top layers. Once you've downloaded that, we can open up Voxelizer. Within Voxelizer, we're going to left click our import model. We're going to go to the folder that we just downloaded and select those three STL files the bottom, middle, and top. Click open. Voxelizer is going to ask if you want to align these STL files. Click yes. Within the model arrangement area, you can scale, rotate, and move your image, but we're just going to leave it as is and click Next. Next, Voxelizer is going to bring us to the print settings. If you're using M3D's ABSR color calibrated filament, you can just leave these settings as they are, as they're going to work perfect for that filament. We're going to leave our quality to 50%. We're going to make sure our durability is light honeycomb. We're going to change our infill to 50%. We're not going to have supports for this model. Our power raft we will change to a dot and we're going to keep our artifact on brim. Next thing we're going to do is go to colors in the color tab and we're going to mix our own colors. If you're using another filament outside of M3D's color calibrated CMYK filament you can left click on any one of these colors and choose the color that you need that matches up with the filament that you're loading. But for this next step we're going to click on this plus icon and that's going to open up our simple gradient and texture tabs. We're going to be working in the simple tab right now and I want to make a color mixture of 25 percent for all my colors. This is going to be my base layer color. Add material, go back to the plus, and then we're going to choose our darkest color for our outline. Keeping in mind I want all my motors to be moving at at least two percent ratio at all times. Anything that isn't two percent make it that if you click on another number, it will equal out to 100% that you need. Click Add Material. And if you scroll up, you'll see that those colors have now been added to our mixture list. The next thing that we're going to do is add those colors. If you hover your mouse over each one of your layers, you'll see that they're telling you which layer it's working on. So with the top selected, we're going to right-click, go to our materials, left-click, and choose our darkest color. Again, hovering back over, choose your bottom, materials, and our mixing color. Next we're going to go to the middle, right click, materials, and we're going to go to our image icon right here. This is going to open up our image and projection settings area, and here we're going to open up our image projection that we're working with. We're going to change projection type to one-sided. We're going to change generation mode from weaving to complex. We're going to stick with four on our color count. Though I've gone up to 16 without issues, beyond 16 Voxelizer has crashed. This image works best with a few tweaks with the move X and move Y. So I'm going to put those in. Scale it to 200%. Next we're going to work on the color and we're going to find color key. Voxelizer will automatically choose the colors based off of what it represents from your image. Again we want each one of our colors to be moving at least 2%. So whatever is not moving at 2% add it. And in this area we have to manually compensate for that. So make sure you choose a corresponding number that has a good number that you can take out of it. Once you're satisfied with that, we can click Apply. 
From here we're going to go to next. Voxelizer is going to slice all this into a G-code. Within our preview area we can see how long it's going to take. This print should take about an hour and 30 minutes. From here we can click save and then just save that into your folder. We're going to call it Butterfly ABSR. From here you can close Voxelizer. I would suggest that if you liked the colors that you made to save this as right now Voxelizer doesn't save any color palettes. If you're all set you can just close it and we'll move on to the next step. Next we're going to be in the Duet Web Controller. You access this by turning on your crane quad and your crane should give you an IP address as long as you're connected to your network. Once you've entered that IP address into your address bar you'll start with the main control area. We're going to move to our G-code files, upload G-code, and we're going to upload that ABSR file. Once you've done that, I like to home all. From here I'm going to heat my bed, I'm going to heat my nozzle, and I'm going to extrude 20 millimeters at 3 feed rate just to make sure that I'm purged. Once I do that I move back to G-code files, I left click on my butterfly ABS code, and I click yes. That's going to load up my G-code and start printing.